Here's some more of the supplies we've been getting in the mail. Air dryer rebuild kit, air compressor rebuild kit. It's just a um, trailer plug adapter for the back. Seals, I don't even know what's in some of this stuff. DP Equip, what is that? Oh, these I bought. These are something for the, they go on top of the CTIS seals. You don't really need these unless yours are broke, but I don't know why they would break. Not necessary. Got some 10 weight oil for the winch. This is a rear view camera. Some valve seals between the valve and the wheel. Got some little of those wheel stems. Got those from, I think, what is that, Eric's military. Transmission filters. Some transit oil. And uh, I do have a, an abundance of CTIS seals, so if anyone needs them, hit me up. Some of the projects for the future. Let's pull this apart. Using a 9 16 socket. Getting me a bigger hammer is what I need. Oh, it's going. Just let that oil drain out for a minute. Now the cross that the spider gears are on is stuck in the cap. And the last one, I did pull the whole thing out together, but it was a little bit awkward. I want to see if I can just get these to come out of the cap by hitting them. Yeah, there we go. Turn it, get the other side. Somebody asked me if I could do a little tutorial on what, what's going on here. So this is the end of the axle coming from the rear differential. So that's powering this outside gear here. So I'm just going to mark this gear right there and we'll mark this stud. We'll see what happens here. So when the power from the engine turns this, One rotation, and that stud's at the bottom. So we go two rotations, and we're back. So it's a two to one gear reduction right out here on the end of the axle. And to get, there's another gear just like this one in the back there. And behind that gear, there's some shims. So the cover goes up against this one and you have to shim it properly behind that back gear. One camera just died, but I think this one's got the better angle. So yeah, you shim it behind this back gear. So when this is up against the cover, you have the proper clearance here on these gears. So I'm just going to take this. Snap ring. I want it right in the bucket of oil. Take that snap ring off the end of the axle. I'm just going to slide this gear off. I'm just going to take the, the cross out of there. Huh. Stuck back in. Might as well pull the axle over there. Just 
just to get it out of the way. Now we have that back gear. Now I have a nice little tool that I use. This is a uh, pull rod from my body shop days. Just a little hook, any kind of little hook. Just to get behind that gear, you know, the oil kind of holds it in there. Because it's a nice machine surface right here. That was a shim. There was one shim. The oil really sticks stuff together. Maybe there's two there. Yeah, there is two there. couple of shims. The o-ring goes in this slot here and anything on the outside of that is kind of exposed to the weather and these ends get a little rusty. So I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper and you don't want to hit this surface that the bearing rides on but you just want to do the end. This is just a 100 grit. of the cross with just a sandpaper disc. Make sure everything is cleaned up. And I'm just going to reassemble. Have some new o rings for that. Now we need to measure the distance from the surface of the wheel bearing nut out to the surface of the hub. It needs to be between 2168 and 2173 inches. And that gives us the right amount of space to sandwich those spider gears together. Well, Ethan Turner over at Trail Tech made this nice straight edge to bolt on across here. help us out with this task. I didn't have two short bolts so I had to use a spacer there. We'll just need to be snugged down. I've measured the tool and the thickness of the tool is 0.731. So what I've done here is the tool is the 0.731. I've added that to our um, specifications and it and uh, with the tool added, it's 2.899 to 2.904. Now this could be slightly different um, with different tools. So measure your tool that you're using, your straight edge, and add it to the specifications. So in my case, I'm getting 2.899 to 2.904. That's the sp my specifications with my tool. So we're going to take our caliper, make sure it's zeroed out. The end of this is going to hit the nut and this surface here will go right onto our tool and we're measuring 
six. With the tool, I should be at 2.899 to 2.904, no, I'm at 2.966. Let's write that down. I'm at 2.966, and we want to be at 2.8. Eight nine nine. Let's go for the shortest measurement. Two point eight nine nine. So this is seven. That's going to be six zero. So we're looking to add point zero six seven in shims. And what we have for shims are 0 0.012, 0 0.015, 0 0.020, 0 0.025, and 0 0.31. So let's go with a couple of 0 0.31s. Okay, so I have a couple of the thicker <coughs> 0 0.031s roughly. We're going to put those in there, and then we're just going to finger tighten these screws just to hold them in place okay that's all we want to do with those I want to get as close to that screw as I can which is right there so now I'm at two nine zero four that is right on the high end of the specification, so that would work. But I'd like to get it a little tighter, right? We're right on the edge, 2904. So I'm going to take out a 30 and replace it with a 20 and a 15. And one thing I did with these bolts is I just took a file and smoothed the end of them a little bit. So I wouldn't make a mark on the shims. And have to back them off past the um, axle, past the uh, spindle there, so you can get these shims out. So I took out one of the three ones, zero three ones. That's thirty-one thousandths I removed, and I'm putting in a twenty-five thousandths and a fifteen thousandths. measurement again here I'm right on 2.9 and the spec was 2.899 so my thousandths into my spec perfect that's exactly where I want to be so I'm just gonna loosen these take this off Gonna mark where this pin is right there and then I'm gonna mark this gear where the hole is just right there I'm gonna continue this so I know when I slide that on there so I know which spline that is it's that one there. See if I get it in the right spot. So I'm on a spline there. Okay, I'm gonna install the axle. And the end that goes in does not have a slot for a snap ring. That's the outside. So this end first. in the differential now lined up 
slid in. Make sure this is clean. So we're going to be putting the uh, sealer on there. Okay, so we have to lift up on the axle a little bit. These side ones. Ah, oh, I see this bearing. You got to make sure the bearing was up on there, which it wasn't. There we go. So the bearing had come off from the shoulder. It wasn't allowing this washer to come in all the way. So you just have to make sure everything's in place. And you don't want to just leave that there. And then you put this outer gear on. And can we get the axle in there or do we need a bolt? One of the cap bolts works to put in here. We'll get this snap ring on here. Now we need to seal this. I don't think it's going to go much farther than that. I'm using the Permatex Ultra Black Gasket Maker Oil Resistant. Now I'm going to go right from the O ring. I'm going to go, maybe I could have made that a little bigger, but. I don't like excess. Go on the insides. I'm also going to go do the outside of the bolt holes. Just like that. I have cleaned all these surfaces and filed again where I had hit it with the chisel to get it off. And now we're just going to put this back together. We're going to put a little grease on the thrust washer just to hold it in place. And I did the same with the bearing. And that's just to help hold it up on there while we put it on here. Have your bolts somewhere handy. All right, according to the Permatex directions, you just want to finger tight that down, snug it, and leave it for an hour and then torque it. So that's what I'm going to do. Gonna go eat some breakfast. There's Geraldine calling me now. Perfect timing. Good morning. In the shop. I'll be right in. Bye. 
That was super timing. So I'm sure I don't need to snug all these down. Breakfast is ready. Geraldine's the best. Okay, then we'll come back out after breakfast. Torque these to the proper torque. Yeah, so when I was in there eating a breakfast and I watched one of Dave Anderson's videos of changing his fuel filters and he mentioned me, said I inspired him. I think that's great, even though we all are doing sometimes the same video on the same repair or maintenance. Everyone does it a little differently and you can learn something different from each video. Oh, I'm getting a propane delivery. Gotta keep the shop heated. All right. Um, yeah, everyone has a little different spin on their video, so watch them all. You'll learn something new from each one of us. Me, Dave, Sean, um, Chad. <laughs> that's who I was trying to think of, Chad, that's funny. Okay, and others, I just can't think of them right now, but there's a lot of people making uh, maintenance and repair videos on their trucks, so let's get back to this. We're going to tighten these down to fifty foot pounds. Now that I have the gears all shimmed in this hub, I'm gonna go back to the brakes and tear this all apart and clean this up and re-grease it. Then we can put the drum and the shoes back on there. 